Hey, everybody. Hello and welcome. Welcome to everybody in the chat. If you could all do me a big favor when you're coming in, hit that like button. Help us get out those notifications and check your subscribe button as well. But welcome, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see the members in the chat as well. Thank you to my mods today. Dip Me and Glitter is here and Nancy is helping as well. It's been a hot minute. It's been a minute. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to get through we're going to do our Scientology recap because there's lots of news to cover. After this video, probably about 10 minutes afterwards, I'm going to jump back on and we're going to do a little bit more of a life update. And so we're going to do that right afterwards. But check this out, guys. Look at who is finally wearing her own merch. Can we just start there? Because some people have been busting my you know what's about this. I'm not going to name names, Nancy. <laughs> but check it out. Easily distracted by SPTV. <laughs> link down below to the merch shop. <laughs> we got some new stuff too. Um, but I love, I want to thank you guys so much for your amazing notes, amazing emails. And even those of you who've started sending me pictures too, this really made my day when I was taking the day off yesterday and regrouping this just like, I love this. This is the SPTV never in sweatshirt that says a person never in Scientology, but all in on ending the cult. I just love that so much. It definitely, that made me smile. So thank you for sharing that. I don't think I did like my welcome, welcome. I'm Natalie. This is Scientology Life After a Cult, where we talk about what has the internet buzzing in terms of Scientology news. I'm going to share about my 35 years in Scientology with you, leaving with three generations of my family. And throughout the week, I do interviews. So when you hit that subscribe button, you want to hit the notification bell and hit all so you get notifications for when I do these interviews. In fact, today, this afternoon, if you're catching this live, if you're catching it on the replay, go look for the video. I'm finally, 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 finally sitting down and doing an interview with Tori Magoo 44. If you guys have been following the channel here, you'll know how excited I am about this. This is something I've wanted to do for a while. And uh, the stars have aligned and we connected. And I'm going to be talking with Tori this afternoon. Should be 3 p.m. my time. Check. I'll get out a notification. And just so you guys know, I put updates on the community page regularly, especially if I'm making a change to the schedule. If something comes up and we got to reschedule, that will be on the community page. So please do keep an eye on that. We are going to start off with... Um, PTS for Life. Uh, Jeff's wife, and forgive me if I get it wrong, but I think her name is Andrea, did a great video on how to take down Scientology's tax exempt status, sharing some resources, sharing some links as well. So I want to share, I want to share a snippet from that. And there's a link down below to the full video. And I recommend you go check it out because she shares she shares some good links in there that uh, many of you have kind of asked for and asked about. Aaron, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. I appreciate that support. Anybody on their phone watching with an iPhone, if you don't see the join member link, go into the description of this video and there is a link to join. It does not show up for iPhones for some, some bizarre reason. One of many bizarre things on YouTube that I'm just kind of going with. But let's take a little look and a listen at this. Also use this information to contact your elected officials, say your senator, your congressperson, or maybe other people in your area who you think might want to know about this. To make it easier to turn this into a letter, there is a second Google document at bit.ly slash investigate SCN letter. Again, the link will be in the description with this information turned into a letter format. So if you go to the video, go to the video, she's got these awesome links, both for in Canada and outside, including sample letters to write to your elected officials to find out where you stand. Where do you stand on looking into Scientology's tax exempt status? Really good question. Something we want to normalize asking of our elected officials everywhere, all over, all over. DNV 1983, thank you for becoming a member of the channel. I appreciate that support. All right, now let's go look at, let's go over to Growing Up in Scientology and see what A. Aaron was doing. He did a great video yesterday. He actually, he did a few. Well, let's be honest. They're always pretty awesome. But this one really gets into Scientology being prosecuted in Russia. Ooh, there's some stuff in here. I'm like, how have we not known about this? How have we not already been talking about this? How is Scientology not talking about it more? I guess I could see why they would be hiding it. 
but it's very, very interesting. Let's see here. Hold on. We're going to take a look at this. Blew my mind. Go watch the whole video. We're just going to watch a little snippet of it. In, in August 2023. Guys, that's only like six months ago. All of the defendants were found guilty and the money was confiscated, but the punishments were far less than prosecutors had asked for. The head of the St. Petersburg org, Ivan Matsitsky, Matt, Matt Sitsky, Ivan Matsitsky was sentenced to six and a half years in a penal colony, but was released as he had already spent an equivalent amount of time in pre-trial detention. Guys, I may not know much, but it sure sounds to me like this is saying the head of the org in St. Petersburg spent six and a half years in pre-trial detention. How is that not some of the biggest news in the world of Scientology? That is, that is exactly what I thought. So I definitely know I want to learn more about that. A lot of information in the video that Aaron did. And again, that is over at uh, Growing Up in Scientology and Desert Dog. Isn't it true? The Russia video shocked me and usually nothing surprises me. I know. Just when you think you've heard it all, when it comes to Scientology, trust me, they will surprise you. There will be shenanigans will abound because as someone who is in Scientology for 35 years, you would think that nothing surprises me. It dies on a regular basis, a regular basis. Always something to be surprised by. Now let's go over to Los Angeles. We're going to look at a bunch of clips from Confident Chris because he was just hitting it out of the park. He met a, another mini streets yesterday. If you do not know, Confident Chris does these amazing skits with a little mini streets in a little hoodie. It's so fabulous. We're so here for it. He met another mini streets and I thought this was the cutest thing ever. So prepare to feel the feels of cuteness. Look at that. Look what we got. <laughs> they found a mini street. <laughs> Look at that. The little girl has got the mini streets with a stuffed dog and a little protest sign that says S Una Secta. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys for being here. Wow. That's amazing. That's so cute. <laughs> That's streets right there. That's my guy right there. That's my guy. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that, if that doesn't say that Scientology protesting has gone mainstream, I do not know what does. That was so cute. When kids start making little mini streets with their own little protest sign. I mean, we need like a protest Barbie. <laughs> Carrying a Scientology is a cult sign. Oh, just love it. It was so great. Loved it so, so much. Now, the other day when the protests were happening, I had mentioned uh, after we covered things on Easter that we would probably be sharing even more because there's so much that happened, including a huge wall, wall tech fail by Scientology. Now, I want you to pay attention to this because I'm going to show you something after this clip that's going to make you go, what, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So watch this when the wall comes down and you look back there and tell me how many people you think might be in there doing the whole Easter thing that Scientology did the other day. You tell me how many people. Laurie Plays, thank you so much for becoming a member of the channel. You can catch Laurie Plays in Clearwater out there doing her own Scientology audit and wishing them safe travels. She does the safe travels, happy space travelers. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things that Lori said. And you know what, too? Laura, when she breaks into song, Lori's got a great singing voice. So let's take a look at this. And remember, like I said, when you're watching this, look beyond, look beyond the barrier and tell me how many people you think you see. You guys tell me in the chat if you're catching this on the replay, no slacking, you participate in the conversation. How many people do you think showed up to the Easter event in Hollywood? You guys have seen streams. We've covered a little bit a little bit already. So you guys tell me, how many people do we think were there at the Easter event? Then we're going to compare that to what Scientology actually said. It's a cult. It's a cult. This is when the wall falls down that they were using to block the view.
it just blew over. They brought out the sandbags. I mean, granted, you know, the event went on for a few hours. So let's see. Somebody says, uh, you know, 30, maybe less than 100, 60, dozens, 25 to 30, so on and so on. LA Deb, I'm glad that you're catching a live. And thank you so much for being a member. It is like, right? 30, 30, or maybe 100. Let's be generous. Let's even say it was 600. Let's even say that, right? You saw the streams, you saw the video. But as we know, Scientology has something called Scientology math. This is why I think they have no problem pulling kids out of school because, you know, they're just going to teach them some L. Ron Hubbard, how to do some touch assist, and a little bit of Scientology math where one inch is a thousand feet and so on. Let's take a look at this. This is some good old Scientology propaganda put out by, yes, you guessed it, Scientology, about their Easter event. So it says here that despite predictions of rain over Easter weekend, Sunday's annual Easter egg hunt on March 31st proceeded undeterred. Undeterred! Staff and volunteer from the Church of Scientology Los Angeles were prepared no matter the weather with tents erected in case of a storm. But the afternoon was blessed with blue skies when nearly get ready to fall out of your chair. You guys holding on to your seat when nearly 7000 neighbors joined the fun on L. Ron Hubbard Way for the annual Church of Scientology Easter celebration. 7000. Apparently, thousands of kids lined up and raced for 25,000 Easter eggs, including 24 golden eggs. Those finding gold could train them in for a special Easter basket, a stuffed Easter bunny, and other treats. A separate race was organized for the toddlers, ensuring that every child was a winner. Apparently, they had a petting zoo, face painting, egg decorating, donut eating competitions. I'm telling you. This is where the conspiracy theorist in me is going to come out here. Listen to this. <laughs> so first off, first off, we know there was no 7,000 people there. That just did not happen. We saw video. We saw drone video. It just, just think of the traffic that would have been happening. Let's just start there. There would have been so much traffic for this Scientology, Scientology tent fiasco Easter event. <laughs> So, but look how they say they wanted to be very clear in their press release that the tents were up because of rain. Do you guys remember, was it like day before yesterday? Didn't we totally troll them on Monday for this about how, yeah, and they put up these tents and it was so weird and they thought that would block people out. Scientology wants to be very clear that those tents were up because it might've rained. No other reason. They're not trying to hide anything at all. And Diana, you know where I'm going with this. Is that where my donuts ended up? In Chicago, Scientology stole my donuts. We know this. There were donuts delivered. They went inside. They kept them knowing they were not from them, for them. They had my name on it. Knowing Scientology, they probably thought they were from me. <laughs> but yeah, so now they're, they're, they're mocking me now with these don't. Now you're having donut eating contests. I see you. I see you, Scientology. Uh -uh. Of course, it's probably totally coincidental, but you know, that's where my mind went. So yeah, 7,000, you guys, 7,000 people were out there. Tell me what you think about that in the chat and tell me what you think about that in the comments if you're catching this on the replay. Does that math add up? Am I just biased, right? Am I just not seeing it? Am I just seeing what I want to see? You tell me, you tell me. Six of nine, thank you for becoming a member on the channel. I really appreciate that support. Weird, guys. It's really weird. All right. Confident Chris also had a conversation with a young man with, I got to tell you, I'm worried about this kid for a couple of reasons. We are going to watch this clip and then we are going to talk about it and I'll share with you what my concerns are. They're kind of twofold, but let's take a look at this. This is Confident Chris on L. Ron Hubbard Way speaking with a young man who did not identify himself as a Scientologist. He did say that he took some courses, but doesn't identify as a Scientologist. Okay, he's going to take you. Then security comes by to whisk him away, but the kid is not having it. Not yet, anyways. He's going to take you. Well, he's about to have some authority. I'm not getting harassed. I'm, I'm having a conversation. Yeah, that's a yeah, the guy stops to see if he's being harassed. <clears throat> and the kid's like, no, I'm having a conversation. First time, we're, we're making change. We're making history over here. No, it's not making history. 
answer is just most people can't get through to you because you guys just come with like a million things. And I'm he goes on to explain, and the kid kind of is making a good point. He actually wants the information, he wants to know, tell me about these other stories, where can I find out? But his point was it's such a mixed message and there was so much going on with the Easter stuff and all that. And I get what he's saying, but um, yeah, I'm concerned. He, I'm going to assume he lives in Los Angeles, but he, something about me just concerned. I'm just, I'm concerned about the kid. I'll just say that I'm worried about him. I worry a lot about people who have family members in Scientology and they aren't in, or they don't want to be in because um, you got to watch, uh, Confident Chris's, uh, the whole, the whole video and the section of that, because somebody comes up to him and actually does take him away. And we're going to take a look at that. And that really has me worried. Um, because it's just not a good place to be in when you're not gung ho on Scientology and you have family that are. And the fact that he told the security guard basically to pound sand, like, no, I'm having a conversation. It's fine. And the kid asked some good questions. And uh, it, it just, it just something doesn't say, I'm worried about this kid. I'm just worried about it. I got nothing to back it up besides what we're looking at here, the behavior, how he responded to security. And this woman who comes out to get him, I'm going to go out on a limb and I think that might be the sister. You guys tell me, does anybody know, is the Sea Org member that came out to get him, is that his sister? Because he mentioned somewhere earlier that he has a sister in the Sea Org. So check it out. Look, she's going to get you now. We're just having a conversation, like you said. This just makes them look bad. It makes them look bad. Because you said we were going to have a conversation and we're no longer having a conversation because of this. I'm having a normal conversation. He said he wasn't a member, just I'm right here. Look. I thought you said you weren't a Scientologist. Now you are. The Scientologists are telling you what to do. And you're trying to say. You I told know. you, man. I, I mean, she's got a mask on, but the way that he's listening to her and the way that, that you could, the body language between the two of them makes me feel like they're related. I told you. Yeah, See, this is part of it. I just up. made you realize. Look them. Lock them up. I thought you're not a Scientologist. Up! Uh, look, you're under full control. What a great religion that they control you. You aren't even allowed to talk to people without permission. You I can't told talk you. To without permission. Guys, this and he's right. They're not, you know, he's not allowed to talk to people without permission. He's not even, this kid does not consider himself to be a Scientologist, yet he's whisked away. What happened? What happened afterwards? My mind immediately goes to like what type of, you know, manipulation or mind control is going to be attempted on him because he's not getting in line. He's questioning and he should be allowed to ask questions and he should be allowed to seek those answers. So I hope he, I hope he, I hope he keeps looking and learning and I hope that he's all right. And that he's got maybe other family too, that he can get support from. It was just weird, just weird, just very, very weird. Okay, another weird thing that happened. I'm telling you, these van drivers with Scientology, what is happening? This We're going to watch a clip where this van almost hits two different cars, two different vehicles. What is going on, Scientology? Are you becoming a potential trouble source? Because you're losing your grip on driving here. This was disturbing. I don't know if you guys caught this. Tell me in the chat and tell me in the comments if you saw it the other day. Check it out. Well, if you see around... Whoa. The Sea Org van was pulling out. It wasn't even stopping. And you can see that car that's coming right there. And the car that's coming is obviously has a right of way. Oh. He has a right of way, buddy. The Sea Org member. Look! Look! The whole the whole city is on our side. The whole city, the whole city rejects you. The whole city. Sick what in the world? Can we just give that a collective what in the world? It goes to show it's like you're, you need to pay attention and focus. Put your TRs in Scientology, your training routines. You literally are trained to do this when you're being bull baited. That's what it's called in the Scientology world, bull baiting, when someone's trying to push your buttons. So when you have protesters there and they're yelling stuff at you and all of that, they're starting to slip. They're starting to slip. 
these van drivers, and I'm telling you, somebody's going to get in trouble for that too, because it was caught on video. Now it's been shared all over the internet. And then that suppressive Natalie went and shared it and highlighted it even more. <laughs> oh, those van drivers need a break, but we know they're not going to get it. And they, and you know what? They need to be called out on it because there could have been kids walking down the street. So many different things. Some of the elderly that are around there, their own elderly, people going to and from cars. You can't just pull into traffic like that. You need to stop and look both ways. These are basic things. These are basic things, Scientology. Yes, Sharon. Seriously, they need to learn how to drive. Any of my uh, my ex Org friends that might be in the chat, do you remember in the Sea Org, did you ever take a, have to take a course to be able to drive, wasn't there some type of driver's hat or tech or something? I'm vaguely remembering that. I didn't drive when I was in the Sea Org, not till later. Purple Netty, thank you so much for becoming a member. Truly appreciate that. You guys tell me, wasn't there something in the Sea Org that, you know, if you wanted to drive, you had to do this course? I'm just curious. Okay, so Dempsey's saying that Lara said there was a driving course. I do vaguely remember that. Okay, okay. Oh, hey, Lou. St. Louis Scientology Audit is here. Great to see you. Yes, driver's course. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought there was. So it's like, what, what in the world? Somebody is going to have to, what in Scientology is called cramming, where you are sent for correction. You need to go find your misunderstood word on from L. Ron Hubbard Driving School and get it together. Get it together. Get it together, Scientology. There is a new live streamer, or as the kids like to say, a new character has been unlocked. <laughs> we saw him the other day. Selfless Self did a great interview with this guy. Selfless Self has been out there getting some great footage um, all over the testing center, La Poubelle, and they're at uh, the big blue buildings on L. Ron Hubbard Way and has been doing some great protest art too. He did a bunch with uh, chalk art the other day that I saw. So now the guy that Selfless Self spoke to, his channel is Eric Rader. There's a link down below. It's Eric with a C. He is doing his own Scientology audit and protest. We're going to look at a clip from his stream. This is Eric Rader. And then we're going to look at a clip with him from Selfless Self. But check this out from Eric Rader's stream. What a trip. There's just nobody here. Fascinating. I mean, there used to be hundreds of people walking all over the place. Now there's absolutely nobody. Uh... And it's so true what he says, you guys, back in my day, back in my day, boys and girls, gather around for a back in my day. Back in my day, there were, you would see people going back and forth, students that were on course, going to different course rooms. There was just more hustle and bustle. There was more energy. It was a bit more alive. I mean, it was culty as all get out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it was this like fabulous thing, but there was just so much more energy. People were sitting outside on the steps. People doing Scientology auditing need to eat a lot because you need to be what they call sessionable. So you're always going to get a protein shake, some water. You're you're walking around the block to try to like keep your metabolism good. You're doing all the things. Where are the people? Where are the people? They're not there. So he's right about this. So let's let's let, I digress. Let's get back to his uh, video here. used to sit right out there uh but yeah uh you can't blame your actions on other people's orders especially if you're the one creating the chaos let alone delivering it um um what a nice day though those blue skies in la are it is nice when it's not full of fog and smog, not fog, smog. <laughs> Anyways, check him out. Clip down below, a uh, uh, link down below where you can go to his channel. We're going to take a look at Selfless Self and a conversation that he had with Eric Rader. Some more info. Check it out. Stuff gets sticky in every family, but yeah, that's part of it can too. I play some Atari? But has it, has it helped? Has, has, it, has he learned from it? No, because they will never do it. That's, that's what this place does to you. Yeah. It creates... You cannot get out of this this mindset. I was only able to because of incredible amounts of loss and youth. 
that's why I was able to get out. And it destroyed my family because, like I said, I couldn't be around them. Like, I was hunting for a family for most of my life. Like, I've always glommed on to girlfriends that had big families so I could sort of just become part of their family. Yeah, but you, I didn't have a family. Yeah, you, you, you seem like you do well in that. You know? And it was great. Like, I, I loved I, my, one of my favorite dreams I used to go to bed thinking about was to be in a normal family. Whoa. Whatever the fuck that means. Like, I just wanted to come home, watch cartoons, you know. Uh, not right. have to worry about saving the universe. Right. And- <laughs> you know, that sounds about right. It's not all roses and, you know, <laughs> stuff gets sticky in every family. But, yeah, that's part of it, Can too. I, so much- I so resonate with that, wanting that that idea of what you consider to be a normal family. Let's be honest. I think many have, even outside of growing up in Scientology, if you had a background or come from a family where there wasn't a lot of support, wasn't what you would envision is, oh, this is such a great family situation. And I think many of us have found ourselves in that place as children growing up. And that was my experience in Scientology, especially when I became a staff member, um, and which I did at 15. And definitely by then, there's just no more childhood. And there's not much of a childhood before that, especially if you grew up in the C organization. I grew up in Scientology, but my parents were not C organization members. My mom was on staff when I was younger as a child, but then ended up later on when I became a staff member at 15, things really changed after that. So it really resonates what he said about just wanting a family, wanting, you know, watching those after school movies. I remember going to friends' houses and seeing how they would interact with their parents and the things they would do and their parents would like make food for them and have snacks out for them and talk to them and all this stuff. And I thought it was so great. Uh, It just really resonates. I felt that. I really felt that. Jen Nelson, thank you so much. Thank you for gifting a Life After a Cult membership so much. And thank you for that. Yes, I did get some rest. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to do a full update in another video right after this to update you guys on a bunch of stuff. All right. So let's see. Amber's saying about the guy, the kid who got whisked away. It's his sister. She gave him mom eyes. She totally did. I felt it from over here. Like, oh, you need to get in. Are we doing this? We're not doing this. You need to go inside. And then gently grabbing him by the arm. In Scientology, that's uh, called training routine 8C. And that's where you learn to physically handle somebody to get them to go where you want them to go. And the drill, you actually direct a body around the room, another person. Yeah. So they learn how to do that early on and they learn how to do it multiple, multiple ways over and over and over again. Now let's take a look at Mindy Whelan's stream. Mindy was speaking with a woman who went to, she refers to Ellen's show. And I'm going to, you guys, can you tell me in the chat or the comments, does she mean like Ellen DeGeneres? Did she go to a show of hers? Because that part I wasn't totally tracking with, but I thought this was an interesting and fun story nonetheless. And apparently you guys did too, because I got sent a whole bunch of links to this clip. Check it out. So, Lara FM and I went to Ellen's stand-up tonight. And at the end, Lara stood up and explained how she appreciated Ellen for talking about how she was canceled because like being canceled is a good thing sometimes, especially in today's world. And Lara opened up about being raised in Scientology and everybody was just talking. Like you could hear people like, like it was very profound. And I think that it made a big difference, even though Ellen didn't necessarily respond to what Lara had to say, which we were both kind of annoyed about. It was good that Lara got her speech out in front of everybody that was there at the venue. And I like the chatter that was going on. It was significant. Like it was very exciting. So I'm excited. (laughs) It was just good to have um, an audience, you know, to be able to talk about Scientology, especially when Ellen was saying she was raised in Christian science, which added to some of her childhood trauma. So I was like, oh, Lara, you have to be like, I was born in Scientology, you know, like, does that like connect, you know, you know what I mean? Like, just like the whole. And it sounds like you guys are saying, yes, that was Ellen DeGeneres. And that was a show that uh, she and Lara went to. And that's so cool. That's so cool that Lara did that. I love it. All right. Now let's take a look. 
This is from Windy City Thetan Watch in Chicago. We shared a clip the other day, actually it might have been last week, where there was a guy and a Scientology staff member coming out of the organization in Chicago. And she did, you know, did the thing, grabbed him by the arm, trying to get him down the street, past the protesters, don't listen. But Windy City Thetan kept sharing and saying, hey, about this and this and this about Scientology. Well, he heard back from the guy who then said, I'm going to share a clip of a short Windy City, Windy City Thetan Watch did, um, but it's in small print. So I don't know if you can see it at the end, but that guy reaches out and says, hey, thank you. I did look into it. That was me. I am not a member. I did my research on it and I am not a member. I thought that was super cool. Let's take a little look at that link down below where you can see it and other content from Windy City Thetan Watch as well. Anytime you want to get out, we'll help. And this is the pride of the cult. They separate families. They're going to give you a free test. They're going to give you a free test. They're going to give you a free test, and then they're going to make you pay for everything else. They're going to make you take niacin at 100 times the daily recommended dosage by every medical doctor in the U.S. Follow us on YouTube at Windy City Dayton Watch. This is why I'm 100% out of there. It just shows that, yes, protesting does work and have an impact on people not coming into Scientology, even when they've made first contact, because, you know, they're being love bombed, love bombed. They're being given all this information that's just one side of the narrative. And when they hear even a little bit of about it and they've been on the outside world, they are likely going to go look and look into it and check it out and find out and learn more. So it makes it makes a difference. Yeah, the arm grabbing, right, Farah? Arm grabbing tech is strong in Scientology. We saw it so many times where Scientologists have been ushered in, ushered in, and ushered out. It is weird. It is weird. But that's what they do. That's what they do. And they have that they feel they have to do that. They need that level of control with their members. Why? Because it's a human trafficking cult and they're trying to hide that fact. People in Scientology don't know this. They, they would, the vast majority of them, probably 99.8%, 99% maybe of Scientologists would not be there if they understood what human trafficking was and, and could take the blinders off and see what's happening for what it is. But the, the propaganda, what they're being told about it is so strong and the reconditioning and the reprogramming is so strong that those hardcore people are going to be the last ones to leave. But stopping people from ever getting in, educating people who are new and more open to it, definitely, I believe, is the way to go. And it makes a difference with some long-term Scientologists that aren't as hardcore. My, my, I had three generations in my family in Scientology, and we left. And in part, because of the things we heard outside of Scientology, on the internet, on South Park, from people from protesters, even it made a difference. That's something I'm going to chat about when I talk to Tori Magoo 44 this afternoon too. We're going to talk a little bit about protests back in her day and now and what works, what gets people out of Scientology. Let's go take a look at St. Louis where L. Ron, L. Ron Lyre, this is from his stream. And I think Louis, I think Louis Repetto was there too. I do believe I heard his voice, St. Louis Scientology audit in the background and there was this police officer who uh, was kind of cracking up, actually. <laughs> but it was a great interaction in St. Louis outside of Scientology. I got it from school. I went to, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You guys know what you're supposed to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, do. Yes, sir. I read all your laws. Uh, I think I read all your ordinances. Um, we don't plan on doing anything illegal. Yeah, I don't this is you've been out here right. quite a few guys. Yes, sir. Now, so. Yep. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They allowed this in Chicago, so it's different, I guess, in Illinois than it is in the university city or different municipalities. Do you have a business card, sir? Yeah, I do. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Enjoy your time out here. I am really enjoying my time out here. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> 
I'm having fun. I love it. You guys make me laugh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> right. Can I shake your hand? Yeah, nice. Right. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't confiscate this. No, we, we can solve so much more. Did you hear what he said too? I, I'm not, I think it sounded to me almost like he said, I love you guys. You make me laugh. I know for sure. He said, you make me laugh. <laughs> but how great is that? That's in St. Louis, you know, wherever you are protesting, wherever you are, be aware of what the rules are in that city, in that town. They are not the same state to state and even city to city. Cities can have different ordinances when it comes to chalk art, when it comes to a variety of things. So wherever you are going to protest Scientology, find out what those rules and laws are and follow them, unlike Scientology. Even though their way to happiness is all follow the rules, follow the laws of the land. That's just something they say. <laughs> Cracks me up though when they do it, I gotta say, I gotta say. Okay, let's go take a look in Phoenix. This was a very short but interesting interaction with a gentleman who comes up to the protesters and let them know. He lets them know that uh, he watches Aaron growing up in Scientology. It was so great. Check it out. Oh, do you? Yeah. I, I, no, I watched, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 Ron. I live right here. Oh, do you? Yeah. I, I, no, I watched, uh, Scientology. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that great? I love the kilt, too. But yeah, he's, he, he's hip. He knows what's happening. He knows what's happening. He watches A.A. Ronick growing up in Scientology. This is fantastic. So many people, this is the thing too that the protests do. They bring attention locally in the area, but beyond that too, in other communities where you see, you might be like maybe not that far from there and then decide to go down and maybe even participate. We see this happen over and over and over again. And we're seeing many more, many more under the radar Scientologists, which is what we call Scientologists who are not yet ready to announce that they've left Scientology due to family connections, or it even could be work. So they want to kind of like be on the down low about it. So yeah, it, uh, it's a beautiful thing. You know what we're not on the down low about? This fabulous shirt. <laughs> for anyone who wasn't here early, I'm sharing it too to tease Nancy because she has been on me for not wearing my own, uh, my own merch. And I'm like, I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. And I think that video was in Portland. I might've said Phoenix, but I think that was Portland. Nancy was telling me, Hey Kelly. Hey Kelly Copter. I'm glad you love the shirt. Isn't it exciting? I'm finally wearing my own. <laughs> We've got some fun stuff. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Tony has too. Love it. Love it. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's talk a little bit about Austin. Pearl Snappy shared some information. Dan Walks LA did a really beautiful memorial video for KK, who was a protester out there in Austin, who really was helping out, became very close with Pearl Snappy, and unfortunately and tragically recently was killed in a car accident when somebody who was texting and driving hit the motorcycle that she was riding along with other people, and KK died at the scene. Now, Pearl Snappy did a video she found out, was able to connect with KK's family and find out what her GoFundMe was and find out how, how, you know, how we can help. So I'm going to play just a snippet from that, but there's a link down below to Pearl Snappy video. And after this, if you guys could go to the video and go look in her um, description while you're watching it and you'll see the information for the GoFundMe. And it happened because of Dan's video, I believe. Um, and her son reached out to Dan and asked to pass my information on. And so now I have the GoFundMe um, to help support um, KK's family. So her son and her daughter-in-law and her new grandbaby and whatever they need. So um, I have some friends here that I will be bringing uh, into the chat. And we are here to celebrate KK and to um show uh her family like how much she meant to us and it's uh you can see the full video down below link to it and also see the gofundme information also in austin let's take a little peek miss kim was out there doing some live streaming protesting outside the austin organization and speaking to some young people that are finding more and more about the truth about scientology because they've lived many lives they don't believe their children are children. They believe they're adults in small bodies. 
So they literally are working at age 12. They're training as early as 10. And they're, they take them out of school. All of these these channels are ex. None of them got an education. None, none of them got a, a high school diploma. Um, so there's a foundation out there that will help them escape, help them get a job, help them get a GED, things like that. And that's that's why it's a cult, because they don't let you leave. If you're in the Sea Org, especially, you sign a billion-year contract, meaning all of your lives. And they, the ones in there, they don't even know the upper confidential levels. They don't even know about the Thetans or that they're from another planet. Just so interesting to see people's reaction to. And then the young lady chimes in too towards the end and talks about how, you know, she does know some about Scientology. She sees it on the internet. So much of these videos make it into shorts. And I encourage people, make shorts out of whatever videos that this, if the channel allows it for that creator, you'll know because you'll have that button to be able to do that. I do. Make shorts, share it, get the message out because people do see it. It shows up in their algorithm, even for that of the Scientologists. Pearl Snappy says, y'all are so tremendously generous and kind, and I cannot even begin to find words of words of appropriate gratitude. Well, we love you, Pearl Snappy, and thank you for doing what you're doing for KK's family as well. And yeah, that last clip, that was a beautiful young lady, for sure, for sure. Kimberly says, more protesters than members. <laughs> That's probably getting to be true because think about it. When you think about this movement of a whole of raising awareness about Scientology and ending Scientology, it's not just there's the protesters that are there on the street. It's all of you who are watching videos, commenting, sharing information, getting it out there, sharing it with people in your day-to-day -day lives. All of that is raising awareness and it is one giant protest of it. Being here and watching this video right now is a protest of Scientology. Definitely. And I appreciate everything that all of you do. Every view, every click, everything counts and it moves the needle forward. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Nancy says we have more people in this room than there were at their Easter event. <laughs> that is true. That is probably true. Rainy Day Puddles has a question. How would the foundation help a minor like the one we saw? Okay, so if the young man, I don't know how old he was, that I cannot, I'm not familiar with the rules would be in regard to the SPTV foundation on that. I can just speak as an individual that, would. I mean, a minor is a minor. You hope that you can, you know, raise awareness, but I'm not sure. I actually don't know for sure what an answer would be to that question. Well, I will ask and see if I can find out, but I know anything that we can do to raise awareness, even for, you know, his family members, because eventually people do leave Scientology. Not everybody, not always, but a lot of them do. And these protests make a huge difference and all of the information on the internet, creating safe spaces for people to join in. Because I will tell you, there are so many I, you know, there are more people out of Scientology who are ex-Scientologists than current Scientologists. And a lot of them have family members who are in, and a lot of them even aren't, we're never in Scientology, but have family members in and are learning things to help them communicate with their loved ones on the inside. And I want to do more videos about that too, to help people who are under the radar in Scientology. Cause I was like that for two years before I was able to leave. Alicia, hey, thank you so much. Yes. In fact, I sent at the very start of this video, I shared the picture of you in the hoodie. At least I think I did. It was in my lineup. <laughs> but I loved it. It's on the community tab on my page. In fact, I will pull it up because it was so great. But everything, more the more information that can be gotten out, the better. It all adds up. It all makes a difference. And hearing from people, it's just so heartwarming to hear the difference that it made for them to learn things about that they didn't know about Scientology or what they had a right to push for in Scientology and maybe help their loved ones too. So check it out. This is Ashley. Look how cute that is. It's so cute. It's the never in a person, never in Scientology, but all in on ending the cult. So Ashley, thank you again. You really made my day sending that, that, uh, that photo. Now, 
I want to say thank you for everybody who sends links and who sends timestamps. It would help me tremendously if you continue to do that. Don't assume that I saw something. I watch quite a bit of content, but I put this together with your help. It also helps me understand what you guys are talking about and what you want to talk about. So don't hesitate, but please, I hope you recognize it helps me a ton. The more links and clips, when you send me a video, let me know what I'm looking at. Show me the timestamp on it. Or if it's left less than a minute, you can even do it as a clip. Same goes for articles and things that you might see. If you see something, say something. Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. I appreciate it. And like I said, we are going to, let me see here, make sure I got these questions. We're going to be doing an interview this afternoon with Tori Magoo 44, who is an OG protester of Scientology. She's got some amazing stories and insights. She's seen a lot. I mean, the woman's 76 years old. She's got a lot to share. And I have a feeling this will be one of many videos that I'll be doing with Tori. Tori helped me when I was leaving Scientology. She doesn't even know this. She never met me. But because of what Tori was doing to protest and speak out against Scientology, it helped solidify for me that I was doing the right thing. It helped to give me strength to know I'm not alone in seeing what I'm seeing in Scientology. So when people speak out against Scientology, especially ex-members, it is very helpful. And all of you never in Scientology are making it possible to amplify that message to people, not just maybe under the radar or in Scientology, but to prevent so many people, not just from getting into Scientology, but cults in general. Because a lot of what we talk about, it's not limited even to Scientology. Cults are cults are cults. Scientology just has its own brand of cultiness. But the more people are educated on the signs to look out for what a cult actually looks like, might even realize that they might already be in a cult themselves, but they don't actually know. So the more people that we can have on and share that message and those stories, I think really helps, really helps to speed things up when it comes to exposing Scientology and ending those abuses. If you could all do me two huge favors, hit that like button before you leave today and check your subscribe button and hit that button as well, along with the notification bell so you can stay up on the interviews. Check my community page. We have, I, ha I do have a couple things coming up. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to go early because I've got a meeting. Um, so I might very well be doing the recap. Tomorrow is, I don't even know, I think it's Thursday if you're catching this live. Uh, but just, just check for notifications in the community tab. But tomorrow, I think I'm going to have to go at 7.30 a.m. Central Time instead of the usual 8 a.m. time because I've got a meeting after that. Now, I'm going to come back on in probably maybe 10 minutes or so, and I'm going to do another video. I'm going to do an update. There's a bunch of stuff I need to share with you guys. Uh, based on my video I did yesterday and sharing the news about Tony, there's more to that. You are not going to believe what has happened in the last 24 hours. I'm not going to get too far into it now, but I wanted to keep that separate because if you want an update on that, you can go watch the other video, but it might be too much for some. Then you just get this recap and this is where, you know, you, we're all good there too. So I'm going to try to keep those two, two things separate because for some people it might be a little more difficult. Um, and let's be honest, it's more difficult for me and I don't want to have every recap that I do end with me crying and all that, but Oh, I am going to do an update probably in the next 10 minutes and uh, we'll probably cry because <laughs> you will not believe what uh, has been happening, but I am going to fill you guys in and I cannot thank you enough for your support. I appreciate it so much. Tony appreciates it. I will talk more about that in the update we're going to do in just a little bit. In the meantime, email me, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Tell me what you see. Send me those clips and those articles. And I hope that you all get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day. <laughs>